everyone. So thank you for watching this video. So today we're going to demonstrate how to take a uh, focused history. This is uh, tailored for any OSCE exam, precisely the MRCSB OSCE for the Royal College of Surgeons of England. Now, our patient for today is an anxious patient who's presented to the pre-admissions clinic uh, because of shortness of breath. And the scenario is a middle-aged patient, is a middle-aged patient who's presented for cholecystectomy. Patient reports shortness of breath uh, starting about six weeks after scheduling of surgery. Uh, the task is to take a focus history within six minutes and discuss with the examiners for three minutes in relation to the information you have gotten from the patient. Now, remember that we are, an uh, an, we are an academy that gives you tools to succeed. And so the memory aid for this is PrEP, HIs, Real Dance Party Series with Friendly Selective Discussions with Examiners. Let's start with PrEP H. So the first thing you want to do is prepare. You want to recall the relevant mem uh, memory aid during the one minute reading time that you have. Now, in this scenario, Socrates, yes, the popular Socrates is useful. It will help you with breathlessness and chest pain so that you have a very organized history. And so let me just remind us about Socrates. So the S is sight, the O is onset, the C is character, and then the R is radiation, and then you have A for associations, and then you have time, cause or timing, and then you have E for exacerbating and relieving factors, isn't it? And you have severity. Now, I would go into engaging with the patient, but before you do that, you need to enter the room, confirm your candidate number with the examiners, and then you need to build rapport. And so in building rapport and explaining, I would introduce myself with the patient today, confirm who I am, seek permission, and then the consultation will start. So we have entered the role now. Uh, so my name is Dr. Mike for this role. Good morning. I am Dr. Mike. I'm one of the candidates for the MRCS exams this morning. I've been asked to, to take a full course history from you. Is this an excellent time to talk? Hello there. Yes, please. Oh, thank you for, for confirming. So may I confirm uh, your name and age, please? It's Judy Abraham, and I'm 45 years old. Well, thank you for confirming that. It's nice to meet you, Judy. I've been told to ask a few questions regarding your, your conditions. Um, thank you for confirming that you are comfortable with that. Of course. That's why I'm here. All right. Uh, wonderful. I'm here to help. So the very first thing I'd like to ask is, if you can tell me what is bothering you and for how long? I've been having occasional shortness of breath for six weeks. Okay, so I we would explore this um, a little bit more with a few more questions, if that's all right. So the first thing I would like to ask is, what, uh, what part of your chest uh, have you been, when have you started um, experiencing this shortness of breath? Uh, it's um actually it's been when it's been about six weeks ago. Okay, if you could specify um where you feel the discomfort the most. About a month ago, I experienced okay. it. Where where do you feel it the most? Uh, actually, it's it's hard to pinpoint. It feels like my chest. Okay, thank you, Judy. When did you first notice this breathlessness? About a month ago. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, now, I would ask you a bit, a few more questions. Did it start suddenly or did, was it gradual? And how would you describe it? It began gradually. Um, it was... It was like a tightness in my chest. Okay. Does this feeling of tightness, does it go anywhere else? 
No, it, it, it stays in my chest. Okay. Do you have other symptoms with this breathlessness? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I get a slight dizziness. Okay. Um, is there any specific time when it is worse during the day? Yes, yes. Uh, it's mostly in the mornings. That's when it happens. Oh, thank you for confirming that. Um, now, does resting or using anything provide relief? Are there certain activities that worsen this this breathlessness? Well, resting helps a bit. Uh, activities like climbing stairs will make it worse. Oh dear, thank you. Sorry to hear that. Um, how serious is this breathlessness? You know, from zero being fine to ten being terrible. Oh, about seven is at its worst. Oh dear, sorry to hear that. Now it's mentioned pain, isn't it? You mentioned you have occasional chest pain. Can we talk about that a little bit? So I would just like to ask you, if you could show me where you feel this pain. Uh, it's right here. It's right in the center of my chest. Oh, thanks for confirming that. Uh, when did this pain begin? Around the same around the same time as the breathlessness. Okay, thank you for also confirming that. Uh, was it you know similar to the to the breathlessness? Was it sudden, or was it uh, gradual? Mm, it started gradually, um, more of a cramping sensation. Oh, sorry to hear about that. And um, just like I asked you with the pain. Does it, are there other symptoms with, so just like I asked you with the breathlessness, are there other symptoms associated with this pain, this chest um, pain? Mm, sometimes a slight dizziness. Oh dear, thank you for confirming. Sorry to hear that. Now, does it go anywhere else as well? No, no, it stays centered. Oh, it stays centered. Um, just like the, uh, the breathlessness, is there a time of the day when it's, worse uh, mostly mostly it's in the mornings oh it's in the mornings okay mm -hmm. does resting or any other thing help does are there activities that makes it worse um unfortunately i'm not sure oh with this one you're not sure okay uh, thanks mm -hmm. so again if you think about how serious this is from zero to ten zero mm. being no problem. Mm. Ten being terrible problem. Where would you put this? Mm, about a about a five at its okay. worst. Okay, okay. So it's it's less than that. It's not as as bad um as to, compared to the breathlessness. I ask you a few things now. Have you noticed a cough? Have you had any recent surgeries or procedure? Have you had any leg pain either in one or both of your legs? Um, no to all. Okay. So I'll just ask you a bit more. Have you had any fever, chest um, pain, uh, chest, um, yeah, fever or noisy breathing, things like that? No, none of those. Okay. Uh, have you lost appetite? Have you lost weight unintentionally recently? Uh, no, no appetite changes, but some weight loss. Okay, okay. Um, have you had any breathlessness when lying flat? Any disruption to your sleep where you wake up and gasp for air? Uh, I use two pillows, uh, no disruptions. Okay. Uh, is there any pain uh, when you move around, when you try to walk? You do physical activities? No. Okay. Does um this breathlessness increase when you're worried about something or you feel anxious or stressed out? Uh, not necessarily, but I have been stressed lately. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you for confirming. Uh, thank you for providing this information, Judy. I will work together to see how best we can help you. 
I'll ask you a bit more questions now just to get uh, a better understanding. So you've confirmed a few things for me, uh, but I'll just go through them again. When did you initially become aware of this breathlessness? Uh, it was about six weeks ago, not long after. I was scheduled for my operation. Okay, thank you. Sorry if I'm asking the questions more than once. Was its onset abrupt or did it manifest gradually? It started slowly, but it's become more frequent recently. Okay, are there moments when you feel short of breath? Yes, uh, especially in the afternoon. Okay, thank you for confirming that. How many pillows do you use to support yourself while sleeping? Uh, I usually use two pads. Okay, uh, great. Thank you for, for confirming. Have you ever felt chest pain? Um, if yes, could you pinpoint where you felt this chest pain? Sorry if I've asked this question before. That's okay. Occasionally, the pain is more in the center of my chest around here. Okay, okay. Now, I'll ask you a few more questions. Have you been experiencing tummy discomfort? Frequent urination no, or any I, other symptoms I've not listed? No, I haven't noticed any of those issues. Okay, thank you. I'll ask you a bit, few more questions around medications. Are you currently on any prescribed medications by your family doctor? Uh, just some painkillers and my regular blood pressure medication. Okay. Uh, do you take them regularly? No, just the upcoming cholecystomy. Col 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 uh, col okay. Have you undergone any procedure recently? Uh, I work as a receptionist. Okay, okay. So uh, I'll just ask you a bit of personal questions now. So I've confirmed that you work as a receptionist. Could you inform me about who resides with you? Just me and my two kids. Okay, um, so in terms of um, your family members, has anyone encountered something similar to what you're going through now? Uh, yes, my aunt had some heart issues, but I'm not sure if it's related. Okay, yes, <laughs> thanks for, for sharing that. So I'll ask you a few things now. So right now I need to summarize what we've discussed. So can I confirm that the reason why you are here is you've had um you've been shortness, you've been short of breath and have chest pain for about six weeks. And the shortness of breath and chest pain started after you were scheduled for surgery. Uh, you are otherwise fine except for the fact that you're taking medications for surgery. And lately you've been uh, stressed and worried a little bit. This pain that you have is more, the shortness of breath is more in the mornings, the pains is more in the afternoon. Uh, is, is that correct? Hmm, I thought it might be stress or anxiety due to my upcoming surgery, but I'm unsure. Okay, so I'll ask you now just to clarify. What do you think is the cause of uh, what's uh, the problem you are dealing with? Hmm, I really want to know what's causing this. Okay. Serious, yeah. So, um, so what would you ideally hope for in terms of the assistance we can offer you, uh, or, 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 or in terms of assistance or intervention? Uh, not at the moment, doctor. Um. Okay. Are you concerned about anything in terms uh, of... No, not at the moment. Uh, okay. Thank you for taking time um, to speak to me in regards to this. Okay. Okay. Um, that's, that's fine. So uh, thank you for coming by the clinics, uh, uh, Judy. So I would discuss with the consultant and um, I would speak with you in the next few minutes, if that's okay. All right. If you need anything, please let the nurses know. Uh, if you want water or a drink, uh, we have a few within the clinics while you wait for me. Uh, if that's fine, um, 
I would speak to you a, in a few minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. So thank we've you. had a fruitful conversation. So this is Judy, a 45-year-old receptionist, scheduled for cholecystectomy and has been experiencing breathlessness as worsened in the afternoon and occasional central chest pain over the last six weeks. She's currently on painkillers and blood pressure medication, living with her two children. Judy mentioned the family history of heart issues in her aunt, while initially suspecting her symptoms may be stress induced due to her upcoming surgery. Judy is keen to understand the root cause and ensure it's not indicative of a more severe pathology. So I would answer the examiner's questions now. And so the examiners have, are asking, okay, good afternoon. Uh, based on my assessment of, uh, I'm offering this to the examiners, I have the following management plan. Okay, examiner would say, please go ahead. Uh, so um, firstly, I would like to liaise with the patient's family doctor or GP to obtain all relevant notes and prior investigations concerning her chest pain. An immediate examination of the patient is warranted to fully uh, evaluate her current status. It's pertinent to repeat her blood test, conduct an ECG, a chest X-ray, and get a baseline arterial blood gas in room air. Examiner is, okay, in terms of the cardiology impute, uh, I would like to verify that she has had a recent cardiology investigation like echocardiography and angiogram. If she did, I would discuss these results with a cardiologist to ensure that we are not missing any cardiac uh, contraindications for our surgery. So examiner would ask, how would you address the patient's concern? It's crucial to reassure Judy that I would emphasize her commitment to her well-being and ensure her about her specific fears, aiming to address them. Furthermore, I would recommend involving close families or friends to ensure she has a robust support system pre- and post-operatively. So the examiner would ask, considering all of this, do you believe the operation can proceed? As long as my response will be, as long as there's no documented evidence of any cardiac or respiratory illness, I believe it's safe for the cholecystectomy to carry on. So examiner would close the consultation. Thank you for your plan, Dr. Mike Mello, and I will thank the examiner and leave.